Good evening. Welcome to Liberty tonight. And it's good to see everybody here. If you're able, let's all stand. And we're going to sing a couple songs to get started tonight. Page number 150, 150, 150. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. And we'll sing a couple verses in this song. 150. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid on. familiar to some the next time he comes sing about this great song about heaven about Christ's return the next time he comes it's 364 if you need it we're going to sing both verses on the first from the lofty courts of heaven job good to see you here tonight and I appreciate you being here and it's a beautiful day today and looking forward to the service tonight Mr. Kokoboon will be speaking and uh, looking forward to hearing him he's always uh, uh, does a great job and really looking forward to him speaking tonight Pastor Gray as he mentioned Sunday has gone to Texas to uh, be with his parents spend a little bit of time with them this week and his mom is now home and is doing better and his dad is Improving as well. His dad has uh, canceled any of his meetings that he has for a month. And so he's going to try to get some rest, but both are improving and doing well. And so I'm uh, grateful that, for that as well. And then we have a lot of teachers, of course, in the Sunday school teachers meeting tonight. And so uh, we've got some folks out. But it's good to see you here. And again, looking forward to uh, Mr. Kokoboon speaking tonight. So let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And then we're going to go through a couple of announcements, our prayer sheet, and the continuance of our service. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do love you. And Lord, I want to thank you again for heaven. And uh, thank you that we have the opportunity to gather together tonight and to sing and rejoice together and hear your word preached. 
And I pray for all the services that are taking place on the property tonight for the Pee Wee Patch and Patch Clubs and the teenagers, the Spanish service that's going on as well, Sunday school teachers meeting, the discipleship, the new members meetings, a lot of things going on here, Lord, in the service here. Lord, may you be pleased by everything that's done here tonight, and may you be honored. I do pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. Let me give you just a couple of announcements. Uh, remember, next Saturday, uh, which is September 30th, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, remember, is the churchwide yard sale. There's an announcement about that in the bulletin. And so if you have any questions about that, if you're interested in that, see Ms. Jenny Gray, and she'll help you uh, with that answer the questions that you have. And then Trailblazers, we've got two activities coming up in the next two or three weeks. Uh, the first one is not tomorrow, but next Thursday, uh, September 28th, we'll be having breakfast in the dining hall. And then from there, we'll be going out and visiting shut-ins. So if you're interested in that, meet in the dining hall at 9 o'clock. And again, we'll have a time of fellowship, have breakfast, and then go out and visit the shut-ins. And then Tuesday, October the 3rd, we remember we had a picnic at my house scheduled for June, and it got rained out, and we rescheduled it. It'll be our fall picnic. It will be at 6 o'clock on October the 3rd, and uh, Kelly and I will be hosting that. If you're coming to that, if you would register on the church app, it is already on there. So if you're coming, uh, if you would register for that, that gives us a good idea of how many to prepare for, and I hope that you'll come, and uh, looking forward to a good uh, evening that night that's Tuesday October 3rd so that's two weeks from yesterday so it'll be on us pretty quick so if you're coming please register it just as soon as you possibly can all right if you did not yet receive your copy of the family ties our ushers will get those to you if you did not get one of those I'm going to go for a couple prayer requests in there and give you a couple updates on some as well so uh, you'll know again more how to pray Look over in the health and general needs is where we're going to look at those. We've again, we have many folks that have had surgery just in the last month or the last four or five weeks, and we're just still trying to keep them before the Lord in the prayers they're recovering. Uh, in the middle column, if you'll notice, you'll see Paul Triani there has had health and back issues. We've been praying for him. He's actually in the hospital, and so do pray for him if you would. Uh, many of you know him, and so pray for him uh, that he will improve. Uh, Terry Russell still recovering from his surgery. Brother John King had eye surgery, and he's recovering from that. And Ms. Granny Audrey and Ms. Joyce Jones, remember they both have fallen and are recovering in rehab centers. Uh, Ms. Granny is in Florida, and then uh, Ms. Joyce here in Crowsdale. Uh, Phil Brown, we've been praying for him that he'd be able to get a dermatology appointment. I say he has got, as I mentioned before, he's got some kind of a a medical condition it has really been very bad for him very pain but itching just a lot and they've not been able to get anything for a, an appointment for several weeks and uh, he actually sent us a text this afternoon he does have an appointment coming up on the 28th so hopefully they can figure out what's going and going on and treat that but it's just been very trying for him so do pray for him and they can find out something at that appointment miss brenda had her heart procedure on monday everything went well there so if you would keep praying for her. Uh, Ms. Joyce Sizemore, uh, she was supposed to have surgery on Tuesday and her doctor had COVID. The surgeon did, so they canceled that surgery. So they have moved it to this coming Tuesday. It will be the 26th. So do pray for her if she has that surgery. Uh, Brother Chris Sailors, we knew that we've been praying for his test. He had coming up today and praise the Lord, God answered the prayer and he got great test results today and we are just thanking God for that. That is a great blessing for that. And I, yes, I asked him today, he sent me a text. I said, so you want me to say tonight that you got good results? He said, no, say that God answered prayer and then I got good test results. So I, that, is, that is exactly right. So thank God for that. We're rejoicing for that and I'm rejoicing with him. Uh, Brother TJ Shaw, this is uh, Abby, my daughter-in-law's dad. Uh, he's having surgery today, and uh, he's in, actually in surgery right now. Went in about probably uh, 2.15 hour time. It's supposed to be about a five-hour surgery, and we're probably going to uh, end up removing his entire kidney. So do pray for him, if you would. I know he'd appreciate our prayers. Brother Mark, we mentioned last week, has now have a surgery date of October the 13th, and we've still been praying for Brother Randy Smith. If you would, pray for him and his health. Uh, Ms. Thibault, which is Deanna's mom, is now home. But do pray for her. And then Ha'ani's mom is having a severe anemia. So do pray for her 
there if you would. And then I've just got two or three more that I want to mention, and I'll see if you have any as well. Uh, we've been praying for uh, Brother Dan. A uh, preacher mentioned that about two weeks ago, just to kind of at the end of the service. He pray for Brother Dan Morrissey. He's struggling, and he is. He's having some a lot of issues with his neck. Uh, he had an MRI, uh, I think it was about a week or so ago now. And so they're trying to get, they also want to do a CT scan on that. So just pray that that will get, everything will get cleared. And they'll be able to figure out exactly what's going on so they can begin treating him. But he's just, it's giving him a lot of issues. So do pray for Brother Dan if you would. And I know he'd appreciate your prayer there. And also pray for the Spanish Family Conference. Spanish, our Spanish ministry is having their family conference uh, starts Friday night. They have a service in here Friday night. They'll be here a lot of the day on Saturday and sessions and things like that. And then it'll conclude on Sunday morning. Then they'll have a Sunday evening service at 5 o'clock. So just pray that the Lord will use that conference with the uh, with the Spanish uh, ministry there. And if you speak Spanish and you have nothing to do on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, I'm sure you'd be welcome to attend. So uh, I know Brother Mata would, uh, would, would not mind that at all. But just, I do pray for the conference there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, any other prayer requests? Let me see if anybody's got any prayer requests before we move on. Just scan in the crowd looking to see. Yes, um, Mr. Michael. Gabriel joined the military. He goes to boot camp Monday. So if y'all will please pray for him, he's got a big journey ahead. All right, do pray for him. I knew that was in the future plans, but I did not know it was going to be this week. Okay. Yeah, he was at Boise State, and uh, he'd gone to college here at Boise State, and so now I knew he eventually wanted to be in the military. But he has already signed up, and so he goes to boot camp, you said, when? Monday. Monday. Okay, so do pray for Gabe. Just graduated uh, from our school in June, so do pray for Gabe, if you would. Who else has a prayer? Yeah, Miss Jane. Several unspoken prayers. Okay, pray for those unspoken prayer requests as well. Anybody else? Just looking. I said we got most everything. All right, I don't see. Am I missing one? I'm sorry. Yeah, Laura. Um, so Kayla and Will are Uh-huh. Sure. Sure. Okay. Do pray for Kayla and the baby in the situation there. Who else? Is it Frankie? Yep. His oldest daughter. Okay. Pray for Frankie's oldest daughter, if you would. Keep her in prayer. Yep. She's still, still struggling with that. Yep. Do pray for that. Yeah. For the sailor. Okay, do pray for that. Pray for her cousin. Anybody else? Yeah, Kevin. I'm sorry, say it again. Good, good. Thank the Lord for that. Nancy received some good news today. And thank the Lord for that. And I know, again, several of you often ask about my dad, and I appreciate your prayers for him. Uh, he's got an appointment that's going to be this Tuesday. So if you would pray, they can maybe find out something that, and they're still trying to pray that he'll get a... Another appointment, they've told him the quickest appointment they can get would be December. And so we just pray they can move that appointment up and he can maybe get some answers. And uh, to, by the way, tomorrow is my parents' 60th anniversary. So if they're watching on live stream, happy anniversary to them as well. So uh, we're going to take up, our, yeah, Brother Laquay. You have your anniversary Friday as well. Happy anniversary to you as well. Awesome. Very good. Our other's offering tonight is going to be for uh, Pastor Barnett from Grace Bible Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. They're trying to purchase a bus, and we just want to be a blessing to them. And so that's what our other's offering tonight is going to be for. So, uh, again, you just pray and give as the Lord would have you to give, and everything given tonight will go towards that, towards helping this church there in Knoxville. Okay, Brother John, come lead us in another song. Let's all stand again. If you're able, turn to page 158. 158. We'll sing the sweet by and by. We'll sing just the first verse, and then we'll greet each other tonight for a little bit. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over. around you today.
if our ushers would come forward. As I mentioned, we're going to take our other's offering tonight. It's for Pastor Barnett there at Grace Bible Baptist Church in Knoxville to help them, assist them with a, a bus. And so again, you give as the Lord would have you to give. And uh, everything again given tonight in its entirety will go towards go towards that. Brother LeQuay, would you pray for us tonight, please, if you don't mind. You can be seated. We'll sing that last verse. <clears throat> Father above, to our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessing that hallow our days in the sweet. All right, it's like, there we go. All right, I will be in uh, John chapter 20. No, Matthew chapter 20, sorry. Matthew chapter 20. I want to thank everybody for their, uh, for all the, the thoughts and the prayers over the summer, uh, the cards and the text and, <clears throat> and all of that. I, I, I do thank you so much for that. Um, I, I'm, I'm not one that, wants a lot of attention all the time but I appreciate the attention that you uh, that you give and I, 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 I know that uh, that we are loved here and uh, I, I, I enjoy uh, being a part of you and I'm so thankful to you for all that you did for us and the meals and the and the cards and the balloons and the little kids sending drawings and all was all, all kind of cool stuff um, uh, there over the summer. I do appreciate that. So uh, thank you so much for that. And it's a um, coincidence uh, that the missionaries of the week are the Hedermans. Um, Heather will be here in two weeks. Um, she's speaking at um, uh, the church in Ashboro. And uh, while she's there, she'll be here for a few days. So she'll be here on a Wednesday uh, here, here with us here. She's going to talk to the patch kids and if I can talk her into it come down here and see everybody down here but uh, thank you for praying for them and their their new situation now um, they are, are starting a church uh, in I think it's the north part of Lima so he's starting a new church up there and so thank you for praying for them I don't think Joshua's coming but Joseph's coming <laughs> Joseph is coming so um, that's the one that's the guy. And of course, Heather's coming too. Yeah. So two out of three ain't bad. You know, Joshua needs to stay there and work. You know, he, 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 he needs to, he needs to work. Send the wife and the kids. Yes, absolutely. So, um, thank you for praying for them and thinking of them as well. Um, they didn't ask me for my notes. So, so it's blank on the back. So let me get you, get you started on the notes. Okay. Let me get you started. You can write what I would have given had they asked for notes, uh, that they didn't ask, so. But I'll give you what I would have given to them, and you can write it down, and then um, we'll fill it in when we get there. So let me get my notes here. Um, so, so the title is A Bible Study in Matthew Chapter 20, so it's kind of generic, okay? No, no, no schnazzy name or anything like that. Just a Bible study in Matthew Chapter 20. 
So um, the notes I would have given is, so if you want to write uh, one, two, three, and four on the back there, and uh, you can fill them in, we'll give you some blanks and um, let you fill it in when we get there. So number one, God blank to take care of you, period. That's the first point we're going to get to eventually. God blank. Uh, a blank to fill in, not a, not a blankety blank, just a, just a, just a blank, okay? Um, to take care of you. Um, and you can put next to it verse 2, verse 4, and verse 7. And you'll see what we're talking about when we get there eventually. Number two, God always blank his promises. God always blank his promise. Don't, 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 don't jump out in front of ahead of me. Stay with me. Okay. No, 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 don't, no, just don't spoil it for everybody else. You know, if you know what it is, just shh. Okay. And, you know, we'll get there eventually. And this is verse eight and nine. Number three. All right. See if you get this one. Okay. All right. Smarty pants. All right. See if you get this one. We should not judge. We should not judge the provisions of God by blank them. Try that, okay? See, see if you can do that one. We should not judge the provisions of God by blank them. And these are verse, this is verses 10 and 11 when we get there. And then point four. We should judge the provisions of God by, oh, I don't want to mess up number three, so I'm going to put two blanks on this one. By blank, because it's the same word, so I don't want to mess up that. By blank, them to the blank. Yeah, there you go. We should, we should judge the provisions of God by blank, them to the blank. And I won't give you the uh, passage for this one because some of you will go look it up ahead of time and try and be all smarty and try to fill it in before you get there. So I'll, I, I won't tell you what the, uh, what the passage is for that one. All right, so that's the notes, and you can fill those in when we get there at the end. But for now, we are in uh, Matthew chapter 20. And I didn't realize this until the other day. I had used this for something else the last time I spoke somewhere. Um, it must have been chapel because it wasn't in church. So it, it must have been school chapel, but it's 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 not the same message. I didn't even think about what we talked about back in chapel. Um, the Lord laid on, on on my heart the other day, and so put it all together. And when I opened this Bible, because uh, I was working in another Bible, when I opened this Bible to the passage, oh, there's something there already. You know, oh yeah. So this is not a repeat. This is a fresh. Okay, this is this is a fresher. Um, Bible study in Matthew chapter 2. I tell you, before we start, can we, uh, would you mind if I prayed, ask the Lord to, uh, to, uh, to bless this and have his will done. So let's pray. Lord, it is, it, it's an honor to be here. Lord, anytime um, I get to talk about you to anybody, Lord, it's an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this church. Uh, Lord, they have been so, so loving and generous and, and, uh, and caring of, uh, of my family and I always, but especially here lately. And Lord, I'm so thankful to you for each one of um, these, my friends and brothers and sisters here with us. And so Lord, as we look in your word today and, and we consider you a little bit here tonight, I pray that you would, um, would speak to our hearts, please. Um, Lord, I pray that we would understand what you would want us to understand. Um, Lord, I pray that you'd help me to say the things that I ought to, and I would not say the things that you don't want me to say, and that uh, and overall you'd be pleased with everything that goes on here in this room tonight, oh, and, and the other rooms uh, are, are around the property where similar things are being said, and, and, and you are being lifted up, and you are being exalted. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd bless all those things tonight. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, we do ask you again that you'd be with our preacher tonight, and so he's with his family. Uh, Lord, thank you for, for the blessing that he and them are to us. And I pray that you 
um, we, we bless their time together tonight. And we love you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to be here together, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 20 then. So we're going to read um, the first 16 verses here, this, this story. And then um, we'll talk about it. And um, I'll get you to read some of it as we go along. Um, but Matthew chapter 20. Hold on. There's one bit of note I need to open up here right quick here. Just unfold that because we're going to get to that pretty quickly. All right. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven. Stop. All right. Right there. Um, the kingdom of heaven. I, I, I did a little bit of study and tried to get an explanation for us. Um, what is the kingdom of heaven? What is the kingdom of heaven? Um, we probably all have a general idea maybe about what we think it is. So I wanted to give a little bit more um, definitive one that we can nail down and use for our purposes tonight. So I looked this up. This is what I found here. I'll just read a couple of paragraphs here for you. What is the kingdom of heaven? Although the precise phrase is not found there, the kingdom of heaven is basically an Old Testament idea. David declares that the Lord is king forever and ever in Psalm 10 and that his kingdom is everlasting and that his dominion endures throughout all generations and that's Psalm 145 13. Daniel speaks of the God of heaven who will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed that's in Daniel chapter 2. A kingdom that is an everlasting kingdom in Daniel chapter 4. So the God of heaven is the king of heaven and the heavenly kingdom is God's kingdom. That makes sense to me. God is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, God, uh, the God of heaven is the king of heaven. The heavenly kingdom is God's kingdom. So th the kingdom of God is everything that God is ruling over. God's kingdom, which includes most everything. Matthew uses the phrase, the kingdom of heaven, 32 times. And is the only gospel writer who uses it at all. The other three, uh, Mark, Luke, and John, use the kingdom of God. It is probable that Matthew used kingdom of heaven because it, because it was more understandable to his primarily Jewish readers. Jews would not speak the name Yahweh or Jehovah because it was so holy to them. And would often substitute heaven when referring to him. Much as we do in an expression like, heaven smiled on me today. And we're referring to God, but we use heaven there. And um, so, so this writer says that Matthew probably used heaven so that his Jewish readers would be able to read it. And uh, because they wouldn't read the, the word God there. There is no significant difference between the kingdom of God, that phrase, and the kingdom of heaven phrase-wise. The one phrase emphasizes the sovereign ruler of the kingdom, kingdom of God, and the other emphasizes the kingdom itself. But, but they are the same. Um, we're in Matthew 20. If you look just a few verses up um, in Matthew 19, if you look at verse 23 there, the um, Bible says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven, and the verse 24, again, Jesus still talking, and again I say unto you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So talking about the same thing, Jesus himself uses both phrases to refer for the, to the same thing because he's, re, he's reiterating what he said in verse 23. In verse 24, he says, I say again. So he's repeating himself, but in one uh, instance he uses one phrase in the other verse he uses a, uh, the other phrase indicating that those two phrases are interchangeable Jesus himself used them interchangeably so kingdom of God kingdom of heaven um, are, are interchangeable there so that's what, what we're talking about here in Matthew chapter 20 for the kingdom of heaven this this realm that uh, that God is in charge of his kingdom is likened to a man that is a householder 
not not John, this is not who we're talking about, not, not that householder, um, is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. So all of you recognize the story, I'm sure. And when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, now I don't know what a penny was worth. I don't know that I would do anything for a penny. But in, in their economy, uh, evidently that was enough for a day's worth of labor. And these, uh, these laborers agreed for a penny a day. He sent them into the vineyard. Um, when we, I'm sorry, look, we're on verse 2. Um, I read verse 1 to you. Would you read verse 2 with me? I know I just did, so I, I kind of messed up what I was going to do. But that's okay, we can go back. All right, everybody read with me uh, verse 2, even though I've already read it. Everybody together, please. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Okay, great. I'm going to read a few more verses. Um, um, when I get to verse 4, read that verse with me, okay? So verse 3 says, And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. All right, everybody in verse 4. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. All right, I'll pick up in verse 5. Um, when I get to verse 7, jump in with me again. Can we, when we get to verse 7, jump in with me. Verse 5. Again, he went out about the sixth hour, uh, about the sixth and the ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, so this is the fifth time, because he went out the beginning, and then three hours later, and then six, and then nine, and then eleventh hour. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? Verse 7, everybody with me. And they said unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Good. All right, and I'll, I'll, I'll do the rest. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when, and when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered, he, but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take that is thine, and go thy way. I will give it. I will give unto the last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is mine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. For many shall be called, but few chosen. We're we'll going to stop there. Verse sixteen. There. On the surface, if if you don't know anything about what's going on here, maybe if, if, if you're a child, maybe the first time you heard this verse somewhere, uh, these, this story somewhere, uh, I remember thinking once upon a time as a child that this story was about the money. This story was about the money. This man had hired people and, and, they, and they squabbled about the money. And it is, and they did. But I don't think that's primarily what the Lord is uh, trying to teach us right here. So here, here, maybe not very lately, but I remember teaching one time um, from this passage and saying that this is about the sovereignty of God. That God is right to do whatever he wants to with whatever is his. And what is his, it's everything. So he is right to do whatever he wants to with whatever. Because um, he even says, the, uh, the good man says down there at the bottom, um... In verse 15, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? You know, he asked that question, you know, um, I can do what I want to with what is mine, which is the money. You know, you have no right to be mad at me about that. So I've, I've, I've even taught that that's what this story is about. And you, you can make that point from there, but I don't think that's what this passage is, is really talking about. Um, so... You get the idea of, of the story, right? The, the guy is, is wanting to hire people to work uh, in his vineyard. He goes out in the morning and he meets these folks who are, are looking for work. 
And so he talks with them, and they agree for a penny a day. And they, uh, they, they agree to come to work for him. Great. He goes out three hours later and finds another group of folks that are, are, aren't doing any work and, say, and makes them uh, evidently the same offer. Um, the Bible doesn't say that they agreed for a penny. Uh, he said, whatever is right, I'll, I'll give you. And so these folks agreed to do that as well. He comes out three hours later. So that was the beginning of the day. This is the third hour, the sixth hour. He comes out and finds, finds more people that, that haven't done anything today and hires them with the same kind of uh, deal there. Comes out three hours later, same deal. Finds other folks that aren't working and offers them work and they go. And comes out two hours later, uh, the 11th hour of the day, knowing full well that really there's only one more hour to work. Uh, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna uh, end the work day in an hour, but he finds these folks who haven't worked all day and why haven't you worked? Because nobody hired us, okay come and work and they do and then an hour later he's going to reckon with them he's going to pay everybody so he, he he calls them all together and he starts on this end with the pay uh he tells his steward uh to start at the last and uh work your way up to the first so he he talks to these folks who, who he just hired an hour ago and pays them a penny so of course those folks over there are watching Okay, because everybody has gathered because it's time to get paid. And I, I don't know how many people this was. I don't know if it was 10 people, 20 people, 100 people. 20, I, I don't know how many people this was. But um, those folks watched the man pay these folks the penny. And those folks over there are like, ah, oh, this is going to be a good deal. He promised us a penny, but he gave them a penny. Surely. We've worked all day. They've only worked for an hour. We've worked all day. Surely he's going to pay us more than the penny. We done made a good deal. We're going to get some money today. And, and when the steward gets to them and gives them their penny, now they get all upset. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What do you mean a penny? They got a penny. We've been here all day. Surely we should get more. And the... the discussion with the householder happens. You should pay us more. Why should I pay you more? We agreed on a price. This morning we agreed. So uh, I'm paying you what we agreed on. You can't, you know, be upset with me for that because I, 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 I hired you and worked you under the terms that we agreed upon. And so they have that, um, that little discussion there. And then you get to verse 16. Um, so the last shall be first, and the first shall be, and the first last. For many be called, few be, but few chosen. I got stuck on that verse. I, I understand the story, and what's going on in the story. I understood, you know, the, the things that were said, and the, and, but I didn't understand that verse. So, when you don't understand the Bible, you ask God. God, what does this mean? And um, so the last shall be first, and the first shall be last, and the first last. In God's kingdom, everyone's the same. There's no first and last in God's kingdom. The first is the same as the last, and the last is the same as the first in God's eyes. He loves us all equally. John 3, stings, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life. To, to God, we're all the same. Whether you consider yourself the first or the last, if you want to talk about salvation, the first person who got saved is no better than the last person who will get saved. It's equal to God. God sees everybody the same, and he loves us all the same. You know, I don't have to be like anybody else to earn God's favor for me. Because it's not, and, and I'm getting ahead of myself now. I'm giving away one of the words here. It's not a comparison. God doesn't compare us to one another and say, okay, I like this one more than this one. because No, he loves us all the same. Okay? He loves us all the same. So, 
That's what that phrase, I believe, is trying to say. And then, for many be called, but few chosen. I got stuck on that one for a while. I chewed on that for a while. Now, this is a parable. So it's, uh, it's not an actual, sto- uh, an, an, an actual event. Uh, it's a parable. Jesus makes up this story so he can make a point. But let's try and anchor it in some, some reality. Um, let's say they're in Jerusalem. Okay, which, you know, I've, 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 I should have looked to see if I could figure out where this happened. But let's say it happens in Jerusalem. Uh, all, you know, all of these people in this story would be familiar w- with Jerusalem. So I found out that the Roman historian Tacitus estimated that the population of Jerusalem in AD 70 was about 600,000 people in Jerusalem. Then I read somewhere that Josephus, his estimate was about twice that many. So there's a big swing in um, the opinion as to how many people lived in Jerusalem at this time. So the truth is probably somewhere between those two. Half a million and a million people. So the truth is somewhere between there. When the householder went out to hire people, I don't think he hired everybody who was looking for work. You know, if there's half a million people there in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is not a very rich place, uh, you know, the, the common people. So there was probably a lot of people looking for work. When the householder went out to hire, it's evident that there were many people who were not working that day because he found people not working pretty easily. And he did this five times that day and hired more each time. There was that many people without work that day. He was willing to hire anyone who wanted to work. He didn't put any kind of uh, a qualification upon who he was going to hire. Anybody who wanted to come could come. It was an open invitation. However, it's reasonable to assert that not everyone who could have worked that day accepted the man's invitation. As many people as there are in Jerusalem, and so uh, proportionally as many people who weren't working, I don't think he hired every single person who was out of work that day. He hired some of them, but he didn't pick from them. He made an open invitation, and some people took the invitation, and some people didn't. Many were called. Anybody who wants to work can come, but only a few were chosen and accepted the invitation. This is also true as God uses us to extend his invitation to salvation. Many people will hear his invitation, but only a few people choose to accept it. That should never deter us, though, from extending that invitation. All right? it's, a, it's, a, it's an admonishment to us that we don't determine whether we'll witness depending upon how many people do or don't accept. It's an open invitation that God wants us to give to everybody we can. Did preacher say the other day that the, um, the policeman who helps us on Sunday got saved the other week? I'm glad he did. But you know how long he's been helping us here? A couple years? And no one had asked him that question before? Made me feel bad. I see him every week in junior church. I talked to him every week, and it never occurred to me to ask me if he was saved. I assumed he was. And it was convicted. I'm I'm glad somebody, was it Shane? I'm glad somebody finally asked the man the question so that he can say, he's been here two years and and had known us even more than that because he he does that... um, that driving class and uses our, our, our cafeteria for that. So, and he's been doing that longer than two years. He's been doing it for, for a little while. And so we've been associated with him for that long. And only two weeks ago, somebody asked me if he was saved. Oh, my goodness. That was convicting to me. See him every week. Never thought to ask him that. I'm glad somebody did. I'm glad Shane did. And so regardless of, of how the results... And 
I'm glad when preacher does the, the salvation count every week. That's great, you know. Uh, and, and, and he leads by example. Absolutely he does. He will always tell us how many people he had saved that week. He, he, he doesn't browbeat us with it ever, but always leads by example with it. And, and, and uh, I appreciate that. And, and, and that's an encouragement to me to let God use me to reach other people. Regardless of how the result might be, that's not, that's not up to us. The result's not up to us. It's the, it's the, it's, it's the, the making the invitation that is up to us. And we should all um, make sure that we're faithful to that. Many be called, few be chosen. So that verse cleared up for me there. So I, I was glad then. All right. So those are the, uh, are, are the verses. That's the story. Four conclusions. I can't see the clock. Okay. We'll go quick because I'm, I'm supposed to let, uh, have, have a time of prayer here uh, toward the end here. Four conclusions then. The verses that I had you read with me, verse 2, verse 4, and verse 7. Let me read them for you again. And when he he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into into the vineyard. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Verse 7. Um, he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I, I, that ye shall receive. So, um, observation number one from the story. God promises to take care of us. God promises to take care of you. In, in all three of those instances, when, when he addressed those people, he made a promise to them. Come and work, and I will pay you. Come and work, I will take care of you. Whatever is right, I will do. He makes that promise to them. Verse 2. God always keeps his promises. That that was an obvious one there. Uh, Verse 8 and 9 there. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire. He did what he said he was going to do. He promised to pay them, and at the end of the day, he did. They didn't like how how he paid them, but he paid them like he said. Keep that in mind as we go forward there. Number three, we should not judge the provisions of God by comparing them. And I think this is the point of the story. I think this is the point. We should not judge the provisions of God by comparing them. If the, if, if, if the householder is... Um, the, the example of God in the story, and if we're the, uh, the laborers, what the laborers did wrong or unwisely is they looked at each other and compared what they got with what they got. And that's where the problem came in. When they took their eyes off of what the, uh, the agreement with, with the householder was, they, they took their eyes off of that and started looking amongst themselves. Ah, oh, they got a penny, we should get more. You know, when, when God meets our needs, it's unwise for us to look around and go, hmm, God met their, meet, their need by doing such and so and such and so. But he didn't do that with me. He did something else for me. And God did such and so with them, but he didn't do that with me. And when we get to look at it like that, Sometimes it can, it, it, it can make that, I was gonna say, oh, there, that word pop up in the back of our mind. That's not fair. How come God did that for them, and that for them, and that for them, but he only did this for me? And that's where we get the problem, is in the comparing. What they should have done was realize that the householder did exactly as he promised them. He took care of the need the way he promised he would. We agreed for a penny, I'll give you the penny. And I will give you what is right every time. Instead of looking at how God blesses everybody else and comparing, we ought to just look at him and say, God, did you meet my need? And the answer is always yes. Yes, you met my need, Lord, thank you so much. And I'm glad you met their need too, but Lord, I'm keeping my eyes on you and you met my need. It doesn't matter how he met that need or that need. Remember like when... um, uh, 
Peter and James and other disciples were with Jesus after he resurrected and they were eating there on the, uh, on the beach there. And Jesus was telling John, um, Peter, Peter, John, he was telling one of them what was going to happen to him. And then that disciple looks up and sees the other one and says, well, how about him? What are you going to do with him? And what does Jesus say? What is that to you? It's none of your business. If I will that he lives till I come back. Now, he's not saying that he was going to live till he came back. But he said, if I will that he lives, with, he lives until I come back, what is that to you? You do what I want you to do. You, you, you uh, stay with me on this thing. It doesn't matter what happens to everybody else, so far as that goes. And when we get into that comparison thing, that's when we get in trouble. We ought to just keep our eyes on the Lord and see that, yes, he's meeting my need. And rejoice that he meets those other needs, too. But he's, he, he is providing my, meeting my need, and I need to rejoice in that. And not overlook that because we're looking over here. So I think that's the point of the story and, and what these guys did wrong. We should not judge the provisions of God, of God by comparing them. Verse uh, number four. We should judge the provisions of God by, by comparing them to the need. Philippians 4.19. It's because if I told you what the verse was ahead of time, all of you know Philippians 4.19. You would have jumped to it and uh, ran away from me there. So uh, Philippians 4.19 all of you know this verse already. But I'll read it for you there. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Period. Period. My God. And, uh, the word according. I like that word according. But my God shall supply all of your needs according if the verse said, but my God shall supply all your needs out of his riches and glory. Okay, so here's God in heaven. He's got his baskets of all of his riches, which is a pretty big basket. And if the verse said that God will meet your need out of the basket. Okay, that means he'll take from the basket and meet your need. Okay, and that's good. And, I, you know, that would be God doing, uh, meeting the need. But instead of out of the basket... He says, according to his riches. I'm, I'm a math person. Um, the word according in my math mind is a proportion. It's a proportion. Which says that the, the, the bigger one thing is, the bigger the other thing will be. That's how proportions work. So, if it's according to his riches... Then, if God has a lot, God will meet the need a lot. And if God's riches are little, he'll meet the need a little. It's according. And we all know how much God's riches are. God's riches are immense and, and, and infinite and everything. And it's out of that and according to that infinity that he meets our needs out of that. The more he has, the more he blesses us with according to his riches. So we should judge the, uh, the, the provision of God by comparing them to the need. Did your need get, get taken care of? Yes. Did their need get taken care of? Yes. It doesn't matter how it was. Um, this whole surgery thing this summer, um, we got a bill from, from Duke a while ago. The surgery and the treatments up to that point were, were running anywhere between eighty-five and ninety thousand dollars. I don't have eighty-five or ninety thousand okay. dollars. Uh, preacher doesn't pay me that much. Close, but no, no, no. Uh, I don't have eighty-five or ninety thousand dollars. But this this event in my life, God brought it here. Um, I don't think it's punishment. For anything. Um, you know, I mean, not that I don't do things worthy of punishment, but I, but I don't think this is, this is punishment. You know, it's not like I smoked all my life, and so now I got lung cancer. Well, that's, that, that's on me. Um, maybe I ate too much. Okay, maybe that's what it is. You know, it, 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 it is colon cancer, so maybe, maybe that's the thing. But um, it's an event that God brought to my life. 
And so we've never been concerned about the finances of it. If God brought it, he's going to have to take care of it. I, I can't. So he's going to have to. So we get a letter from Duke sometime after seeing that first bill. And, and they told us, I forget what the percentage was, but a, a, a big percentage of it was going to be covered by some grant or something or another. So the last time I, I saw a bill, it was like $400. You know, we got to pay some stuff, you know, but it'd be $400. And so Duke was going to forgive or, or get paid from somewhere else the other eighty-five, ninety thousand dollars $90,000. So in my case, God didn't give me the money, but he took care of it some other way. In someone else's case, he might give them the money for them to do whatever they need to do. How God meets our needs individually is, should only be important to us. Not, oh, why did you give them $90,000 to meet their need, but you didn't give me that, that money? That's the wrong way to look at this. The right way is, is did you meet his need? Yes. Did you meet my need? Yes. Did you meet their need? Yes. And that's what those workers should have learned that day. That the, the householder met the need the way he promised that he would. He paid everybody like he promised. And if they had seen that, they would have seen how good a householder he was. And that's why he says, how can you, how can you say this is evil when I'm being good? I am being good. I am paying you like I said I would, like I promised I would. I took care of you. But when they got to looking at each other and comparing it that way, you know how the Bible says, when we compare ourselves among ourselves, that's not wise. And that's what they were doing. And that's what I think the story admonishes us not to do. Rely on God for our needs always. God does uh, promise to meet our needs, and he always does so. That's the point of the story. Regardless of how he meets other people's needs, and I'm, I'm glad for him to meet everybody's needs, but how he meets them is between them and God. And I, I ought to just rejoice that it happens and that I need to not overlook the fact that he's meeting my needs too and praise, and, and, and praise the Lord for that. Okay? All right. Let's pray. No, 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 that's not. A, now it's time for you to pray, I guess. Um, so, oh, and um, so far as prayer request goes, thank you for um, always noticing the list of, of the missionaries. I know we, we mentioned the Hedermans there, but thank you that um, you, you always look at that list. If you just pick one a week or one country a week or something like that, pray for our, our missionaries. Um, there's spiritual battles going on all around the world, and they're, and they're having to, uh, uh, to deal with those things. And so um, thank you for praying for them. So we've got a few minutes here. Um, however it is that you like to do so, whether you want to pray in your seats, you want to come up here, you want to pray by yourself, you want to get a partner, whatever. Let's go ahead and end our time together in prayer. And does somebody close in prayer at the end? or just Okay. All right. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, look forward to see you on Sunday again. Again, thank you for your prayers for me and, and my family and, and all your kindnesses to us. Um, take your time to pray. And then when you are done with that, you are dismissed. Thank you for coming tonight.